Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Impact Today. We are Mark and Victoria Bowling. We're evangelists and teachers of the Word of God, the Holy Bible. We're so excited that you have joined us today. We want to encourage you to go ahead and grab a Bible, a notebook, and a pen so you can turn to the scriptures that we read and take some notes because then you can look back on your notes later on and really get the truths of God's Word inside of you. Um, we want to invite you to visit our website at impacttoday.tv. When you go there, you can access all of our previous episodes of the TV show. Mm -hmm. um, we've gotten reports of people who've gone back and started from the beginning and watched every episode, and they received a mighty miracle mm -hmm. from God. They were healed. So we'd like to invite you to do that. And from our website, you can also email us, send us your prayer request, let us know what God is doing in your life. Um, today, we are talking about fellowship with God and how as you cultivate fellowship with God in your life, it's going to take your faith to a higher level. Amen, that's right. If you have been with us for the last few weeks, you will recall that we've talked about the, the integrity of God's Word. Then we talked about redemption, the reality of our redemption that we possess in Christ Jesus. We have talked about the reality of the new creation, that we have more than just forgiveness of sins, as wonderful that is. But when we accepted Jesus Christ, when I say we, everyone who's been born again, when we accepted Jesus Christ, God himself recreated us and made us his own sons and daughters. Yes. Brand new species of being that never existed before. Created in union with Christ Jesus. Amen. Then we talked about the reality of our righteousness in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And how it was a gift that we have received and that God became our righteousness. The Lord Jesus Christ became our righteousness. And the most astonishing thing is God made us his own righteousness in Christ. How amazing that is. Mm -hmm. Then the last week, maybe the last two weeks, we talked about the reality of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and how He is inside of us to help us, to strengthen us, to lead us, to guide us, to teach us, to show us things to come, yes. to help us pray. Amen. And that brings us to this fellowship. God gave us His Word. God has redeemed us. He's made us new creatures in Christ, his own sons and daughters. He has made us righteous. He's put his Holy Spirit in us. All of that contributes to this thing right here. Fellowship with God. He wants fellowship. And really, that's the very purpose of redemption. Yeah. God had to redeem us so that he could fellowship with us. Yes. Because he's holy. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. By whom you were called. It's a call on us mm -hmm. to have fellowship with the Lord. Yeah. The word fellowship means partnership. Well, it means fellowship. <laughs> but it also can be translated from the Greek partnership, intimacy, participation, sharing, and distribution. Mm. Amen. So God the Father has called us to a fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, a partnership, an intimacy, participation. 
a sharing, a distribution. Now remember, last week we talked about the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit within us who's going to help us. He's going to bring us into this fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll never forget that uh, a few years back, I've been saying a few years for a while you now. You have. It's been many years now, but I was actually just going to ask you if you would just tell this story. Yeah, about I think it was maybe about 14 years ago. Yes. I went away to... Uh, be by myself to spend some time in prayer and fasting, a little extra time, not much. And uh, it, during this time of seeking the Lord, the main thing that came out of it was God, and we already know this up here, but I don't know, it's just more real to me that my, because, you know, we do, we do miracle festivals, mm -hmm. you know, as evangelists, but God pressed upon me that his highest calling for my life, my, my greatest purpose in life is not crusades, uh, not evangelism, not uh, these miracle festivals where we preach the gospel, but that it was indeed fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, you know, Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, around verse 10, he said, my determined purpose is that I might know him. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Jesus shed his blood. He died on the cross so that we would be reconciled to God through him. God wants fellowship with you. He wants fellowship with me. Right. And when we are careful to fellowship with him out of the overflow of that friendship, that partnership, that intimacy will come more effective, strong, stable ministry. Yes, Amen. most definitely. Yeah. 1 John chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 and 7. 1 John 1, starting in verse 3. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Mm. Skip down to verse 7. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, if you even look at verse 4, it says, These things we write to you that your joy may be full. So in other words, if you're having fellowship with the Father, mm -hmm. fellowship with the Son, there's going to be joy springing out of it. Amen. E.W. Kenyon said this, Fellowship is the mother of faith, the parent of joy, the source of victory. Mm. When we spend time in fellowship with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ, our faith is going to be strong. We're going to hear from heaven because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we're fellowshipping with the Father, He speaks to us. Yes. He takes a scripture. He highlights it. He writes it on our heart. And when that happens, faith is born. Amen. Then there's joy. There's peace that passes all understanding and victory. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, What's interesting in this chapter, 1 John chapter 1, is he's actually warning us against broken fellowship. Hmm. Now, some people don't understand that. They think, oh, you mean I, I, I lose out on God and I have no relationship with God if I commit a sin? Because it's sin which breaks fellowship. In fact... Uh, let me just read it real quick. It says this, verse 5, this is the message which we've heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie hmm. and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, 
we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So what's he saying here is this. Well, let, me, let me say this. There's a difference between relationship right. and fellowship. Right. You know that, don't you? Yes, I know that. Relationship, let's, for example, a husband and wife, a man and a woman who get married, they have a marriage relationship. Mm -hmm. You're my husband mm -hmm. and I'm your wife. Mm -hmm. Now, if something happens and we act, one of us acts selfishly mm -hmm. or in a rude manner <laughs> and makes the other one, offends the other one, mm -hmm then we could have broken fellowship, but we're still husband and wife. Yes. We still have the relationship of husband and wife, but maybe we're not speaking mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. Or maybe one of us is sleeping on the couch. Oh. <laughs> so the fellowship is broken. Yeah. But the relationship is still intact. In the same way, God is our Father. Yes. And when we sin, He's still our Father. Mm -hmm. But now our heart is condemning us. Yeah. And there's something between us. Mm -hmm. And so the fellowship can be broken. Yes, that's right. So <laughs> there's this where we live, I heard on the radio. Uh, I was listening, I was driving down the street, and there was this commercial. It was advertising something to do with a sleeping problem, right? Sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. <laughs> so people, it, it, there's a lot of people with sleep apnea, they have to wear this thing while they sleep. And so the introduction to the commercial was, someone's getting married and they said, I now pronounce you roommates. Oh. Instead of husband and wife, if someone getting married. Because that person has to wear that machine. Yeah. And so the, the point of this is when you get married as a husband and a, a man and a woman, when they get married, you didn't get married so you could just be roommates. Right. You got married so you could have intimacy with each other. Right. And the point of this right here is God the Father through his son, Jesus Christ, redeemed us, declared us righteous, forgave our sins, not just so we could have right standing with him. He wanted us to have right standing with him so that he could fellowship yes. with you Amen. and me. That's so he good. He wants intimacy with you. Right. He wants you to experience his presence. He wants you to experience the fullness of joy. He wants you to have a peace that surpasses all all understanding mm -hmm. this is vital christianity this is real christianity it's not just a religion of do's and don'ts and going to church and putting money in an offering and being afraid of god no god wants to interact with you i, I heard a man say this about the word he said every time you open this book there's someone on the other side of the pages waiting to encounter you. I love that. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. In fact, this book, the Bible, is the only book in the whole world in which the author is always present when you read it. Amazing. Hallelujah. I love that. Amen. Yes. There's, there's fullness of life. It's mm -hmm. not just like reading a newspaper. No, it's alive. It's full of the life of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so... In this chapter here, in 1 John, he's actually warning us against broken fellowship. Now remember, you can break fellowship. That doesn't mean God doesn't uh, stops being your father. Mm -mm. He's still your father. Right. But you're not going to benefit from his fatherhood unless you have fellowship with him. And what, what breaks the fellowship? Walking in darkness. Yes. Uh, the prophet Isaiah gives us a description of sin. Mm -hmm. He said, each of us, mm -hmm. every man, has turned his own way. Yeah. That's a description of sin. It's when you turn your own way. And notice, you're, you're turn, supposed to be turned towards God to have fellowship with Him. And then when we're selfish yeah. and we turn our own way, that fellowship is broken because look, we turned away yeah. from God. So we have to 
repent yes. and turn back. Turn back to God. Amen. And it tells you how to do that right here. First John 1 John 1.9. Yes. It says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You have to do it. You know, there, there's, it's an act of humility. Now, you don't confess your sins to earn forgiveness from God. No, the price was already paid by the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But you confess your sins to receive what He graciously Grace. offers mm -hmm. to us. You receive what He bought and paid for by His own blood. Hallelujah. And when you do that, you're forgiven. I, you know, one thing that just, it's just so fascinating to me. Is, do you notice it doesn't say, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and merciful to forgive us our sins? Isn't that interesting? It says he's faithful and just, just. to forgive us of our sins. Meaning, when you, if you make a mistake, and you shouldn't try to sin, right? Right. But if you do, in fact, it says in chapter 2, verse 1, notice, my little children... These things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if, if, not when, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He himself is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Propitiation means the atoning sacrifice the appeasement he's the one who satisfied the claims of justice so back to verse chapter 1 verse 9 he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so what that means is if one sins if i sin mm -hmm. i don't have to go to the father and beg him and try to you know in my mind twist his arm to try to convince him into having mercy on me mercy has already been offered and he did not compromise his justice to offer it right just implies it means that's the right thing to do yeah isn't that amazing mm -hmm. and the only reason why he could be just in forgiving us of our sins is because Jesus, his own son, paid, paid. the penalty right. of our sins. Now, if God showed you and me mercy without punishing his son, Jesus Christ, he would be unjust. Right. God did not compromise his righteousness, his justice. He is perfect in righteousness. Thank you, Lord. In justice. In fact, true righteousness and truth are the foundation of his throne. So it's just absolutely amazing that he would go to that extent in order to show you and me mercy. Mm -hmm. By sacrificing his only begotten son. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. You know, Jesus said in John 17, and this is life that they may, he's praying to the Father. He said, Father, and this is life that they may know you and your son whom you have sent. The fullness of life comes through knowing the Father and knowing the Lord Jesus Christ intimately. Amen. Hallelujah. So, what does fellowship do? It brings joy. It brings peace. It is a sharing together with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ. Your needs become His. His needs are yours. What's His need? Sharing the message of Jesus Christ with mm, the world. Yes. Amen. Now, 
You might be thinking, well, I want to fellowship with the Father. How do I do that? You, you can begin. Well, first, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But then you spend time in prayer. Mm -hmm. And what is prayer? Talking to God. Talking to the Father. Not in a religious tone of voice. Just like I'm talking to you right now. God is a person. Just like you. Except he's almighty God. Yes. Amen. So you don't have to change your voice. You, you, you can just talk to the Father from your heart. Another way to fellowship with the Father is to meditate in his word. Yes. Spending time in his word, meditating, taking a verse of scripture, thinking about it, speaking it to yourself, asking the Father, Lord, reveal this to me by your Holy Spirit. What does this mean? What have you done for me? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to do for you? So forth and so on. And worship. Worship. Mm -hmm. Worshiping mm. God. Just, you know, with or without music. Yeah. Just getting down on your knees, lifting up your hands and telling the Lord how much you love Him Amen. and worshiping Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Fellowship. Fellowship. There's something about worship. I want to challenge you. Those of you out there who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to spend time every single day. Get on your knees, lift up your hands, and just say, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for shedding your blood. Thank you, Lord. For the remission of my sins. Oh, Jesus, I love you. I worship you. You're the fairest among 10,000. You're the son of God. Everything begins with you, ends with you. I'm in you, you're in me. In you I live, move, and have my being. And just thank him for his blessings. Thank the Father for his blessings. Thank him that he has saved you, that he's healed you, that he's providing for you, that he's meeting your needs. Yes. And I am telling you, if you will do that, he will become more real to you. Mm -hmm. Not only in presence, but in his manifestation and demonstration in, his, in your life, your needs. You'll see a greater supply come to you. Mm. You'll see miracles happen in your life. This is what it is. It's fellowship. Yes. We're participating with God in this life. We were not created to walk this life, this journey of life, all by ourselves. In Him we live and move and have our being. Amen. And so the more we are aware of him, the more we acknowledge him, and the more we are obedient to his leading in our life, that's also fellowship, hmm. the, more, the more he'll become real to us. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, so let me say it like this. Pray and obey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spend time with him, and he will put desires in your heart. He will put his dreams inside of you, his visions inside of you. And as you are obedient to him, my friend, you'll see great things happen in your Thank life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's a participation. Yes. Now, what if you sin? Well, it tells you what we already said. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So... Don't fall into this trap of thinking, well, I have to wait till church service before I confess my sins. No, 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 no. Don't hold on to that sin for any length of time. Once you miss it, if you make a mistake, stop what you're doing and say, Father, please, please forgive me. I played the fool. I was being really stupid. I messed up. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge this to you. And I ask you to forgive me. And according to your word, I believe you forgive me now and Thank cleanse you, me from all unrighteousness. Now, you're not forgiven because you feel forgiven. You feel forgiven after you're forgiven. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And how do you get forgiven? It tells you. You confess your sin and he's faithful and just to forgive you. And you do that by faith. So you act on 1 John 1. In other words, 
if you mess up. You come to him, you believe it. First John 1, 9. So I'm going to confess my sin. And I believe you're faithful and just to forgive me. Therefore, I declare I'm forgiven now. I'm cleansed Hallelujah. now. And then you move on with your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And you don't look back. The devil might try to replay that thing in your mind. You don't look back. You move forward. Hallelujah. If you'll do these things, I'm telling you, you can have a rich fellowship with the Father God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But before you can ever have fellowship with the Father, you must have a relationship. With right. Him. And how does that happen? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes. If you've never done that, I want to encourage you right now to stop what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Put your attention on the Father God who's calling you right now. He's calling you. He's, yes. he's beckoning to you. Now, be accepted. Come. You are accepted. Come. Come to me, he says. Come, and I will receive you. Say this prayer after me with all of your heart. Say, dear God, dear God, I come to you. I come to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I acknowledge. I acknowledge. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm in need. I'm in of need forgiveness. of forgiveness. I ask you now. I ask you to now to forgive me of all my sins. To forgive me of all my sins. And I believe. And I believe that Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is your son. Is your son. And He paid the price. And He paid the price when He died on the cross. When He died on the cross, He shed His blood. He shed His blood. To wash away my to sin. wash away my sin and I believe and I believe you raised him up from you the raised dead. him up from the dead and therefore and therefore I confess I confess Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is Lord is Lord he is my Lord he is my Lord I receive him I receive as him my savior as my savior and I thank you Jesus and I thank you, you Jesus. place your spirit inside you of me. place your spirit inside and of me, me brand and new. make me brand new. I turn from my past I turn from my past I turn from my selfish Ways. I turn from my selfish and ways. I come to you. And I come to and you. And I thank you. And I thank you. You make me brand new. You make new. me brand new. You make me righteous. You make me righteous. So I can have fellowship with you so now. So I can have fellowship with you now. I believe you do it now. I believe you do it in now. Jesus in name. Jesus' name. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Amen. 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 If you just prayed that prayer from your heart, we want to let you know that all your sins have been washed away and you have become a new creation in Christ Jesus. You'll see a number on the screen. We'd love for you to call that phone number and let somebody know what just happened in your life. Hallelujah, amen. We love you and we hope you join us next week. In the meantime, you can go to our website, impacttoday.tv and on that website, you can find all of the episodes that we've done so far. Uh, God bless you. Bye-bye.